Hello YouTube land, my name's Josh and uh, I'm here to talk about terpenes again. I'm going to do my best to provide information that's somewhat accurate and, and uh, real information, but uh, I want you to know ahead of time that this is a new field for me and uh, I'm very fascinated by it, um, but I definitely don't have all the answers, so if I make any errors in anything I say, forgive me. Um, where do I start? Terpenes are amazing. Um, I'm doing research on terpenes after studying cannabis and after finding how many terpenes cannabis has, the different varieties of cannabis, you know, uh, the myrstocene and there's, there's pinene and you've got these camphor-like smells. All the smells that you get from cannabis are from the terpenes. And um, the thought has been in the past that the effect of cannabis is due to the varying THC, CBN, CBD levels in the cannabis that determine the high. And recently science is starting to find that's not necessarily true. Cannabis that has uh, lost all its terpenes tends to have a very similar effect uh, to strains to one another. In other words, the terpenes make up a synergistic effect of the high. And I'm not just talking about cannabis here. This is in all plants, you know, mints and, and uh, you know, citronella candles. Is citru citronella is actually a, a terpene itself. Many of the plants use terpenes to ward off insects. Alpha pinene is used by pine trees. That's where we get the pine sol, which is a terpene based cleaner. And uh, the same with uh, many other things that we use. Uh, turpentine comes from the word terpene. Um, and the reason why these cleaners are so effective is because terpenes are plants' natural defenses. Uh, they're plants' natural builders of. Uh, immune systems, they're natural uh, insect repellents, they're natural attractors of bees and insects and repellents of bees and insects depending on the terpenes excreted. Now this being said, I have this theory that you know if, if the terpenes of a plant's excreted depend on which insects are interfering with it, what type of weather is going on, let's say there's certain plants like tobacco that release certain odors to call insects. Let's say we take cannabis for instance. We find cannabis as a natural predator. Whatever that may be, whether it's an insect, whether it's a condition, drought, weather, depending on whether we have an indica or a sativa strain. Then we take that natural condition which causes it to produce more resin and apply it to the plant, producing more of not just THC, but one chemical or another. Now, growers already know stressing a plant can produce very, very potent buds, but as for say, increasing the CBD or CBN content by altering one chemical. Uh, aspirin, it, aspirin is a, what is salicylic acid, I believe. It's made from willow bark. And people don't know that this is the first medicine, the first pharmaceutical put on the market was aspirin, and it was made from willow bark. And they found now that feeding aspirin to plants, you know, you've heard this old wives' tale about giving aspirin to your plants. You dissolve one tablet in a gallon of water and water your plant. It builds the plant's immune system. Uh, scientists were calling it, you know, just bogus, uh, you know, for years. But uh, they find that obviously we're taking uh, this plant's natural immune booster. That's what aspirin is. It boosts the plant's immune system. So if you can soak your cuttings, or if you, um, some people soak their cuttings in aspirin before they start them. Some people water their plants with aspirin. Claim to have great results, but. Not a lot of scientists are really doing these things as far as, um, you know, if we have more backyard scientists experimenting, we can learn more faster, but it's really hard to gain good experiments that are legitimate. Um, let's see if I, I wrote a few things down here. I just wanted to try to um, see if I forgot anything. Because um, there's one thing that really got me about this, you know. No. Oh, lycopene. Uh, it was from, uh, you know, from tomatoes. We were talking about how, how tomatoes actually cause body odor. Um, they're thinking that the lycopene in uh, in tomatoes cause cause body odor, and they're talking about uh, how essential oils are excreted through generally through the armpits, and this is maybe why some people stink. Of course, body chemistry has a lot to play. I mean, some people just have a natural musky odor. Um, I personally don't. I have times when I stink, like I'll go through a phase where I smell for a couple days or something where my pits stink, and then the other times I don't. It's usually when you're dehydrated. Uh, when I'm dehydrated or something, but 
I have friends that just smell musky all the time. And it really depends on body chemistry. But those are your natural pheromones and your, you know, as far as terpenes, let's stick to the subject. Um, here's the thing, I read this article about terpenes, discovering how the terpenes from frankincense and uh, I can't remember what else, it was either, I think nutmeg or something, but, uh, oh, it was frankincense and sandalwood. The terpenes from those two can cross the blood-brain barrier. Then I read up on essential oils and found that they as well can cross the blood-brain barrier. All of them can. And people talk about essential oils as if the oil itself is the cure-all. Now, I talked about last week, I was talking about um, the whole Jesus thing, did Jesus smoke cannabis, and the anointing oil. And um, I really have a newfound theory on this, but I'm not going to quite present it yet. But um, the oil itself is not, is not the key. It's the terpenes within these oils and the synergy of these terpenes. So if they were mixing, say, cinnamon with cannabis oil, it's not be just because it helps to absorb through the skin or whatnot. It's the synergistic effect. And what we have is we're consuming these foods and, and, and uh, vitamin A, I believe, is a is a terpene as, as well. And so is cholesterol. Cholesterol is a terpene. So terpenes are not just plant odors, they're, they're chemicals that your body uses for various things. And since we know that the body uses certain terpenes, it can only lead one to believe that terpenes can have very beneficial effects for us. In other words, they found that some terpenes have uh, certain components of, let's say, cannabis, like CBNs, can be anti-cancer. And the so here's my thought. If you sit in a room, you know how people say, uh, if you've ever smelled really good cannabis and you, you're not a smoker, you know, you, I've heard people say, I really enjoy the smell of pot. I almost get high smelling it. Well, you do. You do. It's not high, as in the THC part, but your body is still absorbing these terpenes through odor. So my thought is I'd love to see an experiment where someone is set in a room full of cannabis to just smell it for a few hours and see uh, if different, you know, maybe it lowers blood pressure or something. But these experiments are too difficult to do. Too many, uh, I can't remember the name for it, but the external influences that make it hard to do these things. Um, you know, there's monoterpenes and all these different ones. Here's the one thing I found about, um, oh, phenylpropanoids make up 20% of the total carbon on Earth, the bi uh, secondary carbon. Um, that's a lot. Uh, phenylpropanols and terpenes combined make up 100% of the essential oil. So when you buy lavender oil, you buy rosemary, you buy melaleuca, you buy whatever it may be, what you're buying is phenylpropanols and, or phenyl, yeah, I think it's phenylpropanols and uh, terpenes. Uh, and here's, here's the thing you should know about essential oils. What I've found is they do this process where they actually reduce the amount of terpenes in there and it somehow increases the smell. I can't remember the details of the science, but many of these over-the-counter great smelling oils you buy very have very few terpenes in them. The terpenes are the key to the oil. The terpenes are what make the oil work. So just because something smells good doesn't mean you're getting the benefits of it. This is why I tell people that smoking pure cannabis is much better than smoking uh, uh, oils or hash. It's um, there are un misunderstood constituents of cannabis. I better see the time on this because I don't want to run out of time. I got plenty. Um, it's a combination of all these different chemicals, and we've known this, but now all of a sudden terpenes are thrown into the mix. And, you know, I spent all day researching terpenes, and yesterday too, and I, I got a book on uh, cannabinoids and terpenes. The reason why I'm specifically uh, attracted to cannabis as my subject of interest is because I am very much a cannabis lover and a connoisseur. I've always enjoyed the very intense smells of cannabis and those who smoke know that if you smoked for say, I've smoked 23 years or so, sometimes you'll take a whiff of a bud and it will take you back to a moment in time where the last time you had that kind or, uh, and, and we know that oils, you know, uh, they trigger memory stronger than any other, you know, sense, you know. It's, 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 
Smells are, this, are the center to our hearts. So they're the, the key to our hearts is odor, uh, the key to our memories, bringing back those emotions and feelings. And I think that the more experienced people, uh, the more uh, experiments people do, and the more people put their love into this kind of stuff, um, people like you and me who do experiments, you know, on their plants in their backyard and whatnot. Um, I'm doing intention experiments with vibration in the root systems, um, playing music for plants, that kind of stuff. But imagine if you could release an essential oil in your grow room and have it double resin production. These kind of things are destined to be worked out, and we're... <laughs> it's a whole new world opened up. The first cannabis article that talked about terpenes was, I believe, in 2001. So this is like a little over, you know, 12 years old. This isn't a big thing yet. And I was shocked when I googled terpenes to find that there really was not that much information on it, except for cannabis, because people have been interested. Cannabis doesn't just have a minty or a camphorous smell, it has minty and camphorous and all these different spicy smells and all spices, all spices, everything, pepper, uh, I think it's myrstocene and pepper and you have all these different odors from these different spices that bring forth these great memories and ideas and uh, it's, it's a fascinating subject to be interested in and I'm really glad that I, that I found something that I can delve deeply in because there's not enough people doing it. Um, the food and uh, drug companies have known about this for years and the reason why I'm so involved in it now is because I think that we can avoid taking many drugs by utilizing terpenes to cure ourselves. They found that some of these have anti-cancer properties. They can trigger, uh, yes there are, you know, all the years people talking about demonizing cannabis like it's so horrible talking about how pot causes cancer and now we have scientific proof damn it that pot actually helps cure cancer if you increase the CBD and CBN levels there's a scientist saying that you know he does the cannabis uh, research and uh, checks for percentages and quality for growers and he said that 99% of the plants that come through his uh, laboratory are really high in THC you know say 15 to 20 percent and CBD levels of like 1% or less. I have a friend who purposefully selected these greenhouse seeds, the, the, or these uh, Mandala, I think it was, they were, uh, no, that's the Crystallica. I don't remember the company that made them, but uh, they're called uh, uh, Blue Blood. It's a blueberry and OG cross. And they found that uh, this particular breed has up to a 10% CB, CBD content, I believe, which is the anti-spasmodic, anti-cancer, anti-anxious, uh, you know, it has many different effects for different people. So I'm growing one type of that, and uh, they're not really high THC. I think that we can affect cannabis production within a breed itself. In other words, by, say, injecting an enzyme, a particular enzyme into the stem of a cannabis plant that's growing you can alter its fate, its destiny, if you, if you will. I won't get into the details of how it works, but there are particular enzymes and, and uh, molecules that eventually convert into either THCA or CBDs, CBN, and you have the THCA, which as you dry it, converts a lot of it to THC, and then when you smoke it, it vaporizes those terpenes. This is why smoking pot is so effective, because of the way that it affects it. It heats it up to the temperature that it needs to be. Uh, so perhaps there's an enzyme we can inject to say maybe a really high CBD content weed. You know, um, you could grow two plants identically side by side and have one with a particular enzyme in the soil or something. And then there's the mycorrhizal relationship with mushrooms. I won't even get into that, but um, I just wanted to share. So I hope everybody's doing well. and. Uh, Talk to y'all soon. Namaste.